Hello there. I just opened up a pack of cheesy that's shining in my eye. I just thought, what a perfect time to start making a video right now as I'm eating. You see, when you're really motivated to make a video, you need to jump on the moment that you're motivated. And I'm motivated right now as I'm eating crisps. And I'm motivated just as my camera's gonna run out of battery. So, okay, we're back now with a new battery. So let's hope there's no more issues with the creation of this video. We got about five seconds in. I don't really have a plan for this video. I know what I wanna talk about, but I've not really planned it out at all. So it might just seem a bit haphazard. I get asked all the time how I became a model and how I got to the point of modeling that I've got to and like the whole process of that. So, so I've already kind of made a video about my modeling story, but that was a while ago and a lot's happened since then. And since the Louis Vuitton fragrance came out, I've been getting this question a lot more. What I wanted to do today is talk about some of like the moments in my career that I thought were like vital or important to getting to where I am now. There's a meowing cat. One second, I need to let him in. The first important moment was me getting scouted because if I didn't get scouted, I wouldn't have gone to Barcelona, then I wouldn't have done any test shoots there or met my agency. So I got scouted, I went to Barcelona, I did some test shoots and I met my first agency who was still my mother agency to this day. Through them, they started like connecting me with other agencies across the world, one of which being my agency in Milan. And like two days after I signed with them, I got a call from my agent asking me if I'd heard of Prada because I needed to fly to Milan to like see if I was good for the show. And I'd heard of them, but I didn't really know how big a deal it was like walking the Prada show. It's like one of the most prestigious shows, especially to start off walking. It's, it's one of the best. I had to go to Milan, but that was like two months from that moment. And in those two months, I kind of forgot about it. And like a week before I was supposed to go, I I was in Switzerland and I got the worst haircut of my life. I wanted like a short back and side, similar to what I've got now, but there was a complete loss in translation. And basically, I I was almost bald. I was almost bald. And then I turned up for like the fittings and the hair and makeup test for the Prada show. And I'm like, what has happened to you? <laughs> so yeah, I didn't end up walking that show, which happened to be the Women's Fashion Week one, but they said that I could walk the next show, which was the Men's Fashion Week one, which so overall, I think that was probably better for my career. So yeah, fast forward like three months, I walked the Prada show, it was fantastic. I was absolutely bricking it. So after that, I was told I needed to go to Paris to do the Fashion Week there which was weird. So I went and it ended up being like an immensely successful fashion week. I did like eight shows, one of which being Louis Vuitton, which I opened the show and I closed the show, which was insane. So I think that was like the start of my great relationship with Louis Vuitton because straight after that, I ended up doing the Louis Vuitton campaign, which was also insane. So yeah, my first ever season, I ended up opening and closing the Louis Vuitton show and then doing the Louis Vuitton campaign. So that like kind of set the standard of what I could be in the industry, which helped me a lot. And I cannot thank everyone who believed in me and helped me on that journey. Because of such a good starting season, I was put on the top 50 in models.com, which I think has probably helped a lot uh, in the coming years after that with working consistently. So after such a good first season, I decided to do modeling full time. And I think that has also helped. I'm hungry if you couldn't tell. Because I decided to do it full time really early on, I was able to like make the most of all the hype that was going on. And I was able to do like lots of high end editorials and campaigns and stuff. And that kept the ball rolling for the next like eight seasons I've been doing that. So I established myself as like a catwalk guy for like four seasons. Then after that, I started doing some more of like the masculine shows. So I started doing like Armani and Givenchy and stuff. And I did that for four seasons. And that was kind of like my body changing from a boy to a man, I guess. Still don't have the beard though. It's not happening. I can't remember which season it was, but like the sixth or seventh season maybe, I did the Top Man campaign for like the muscle suits that fit like muscular guys and they did like a topless picture for the campaign and that really helped with like my new image that I'd created. I also did the Givenchy campaign which I think really helped with that and I did like a L'Oreal advert for hair which I'm really happy with. It was my first like advertisement on TV 
So that was amazing to do. So yeah, I think like a mixture of all of those things and the consistency, a lot of activity outside, which all led up to the big moment the Louis Vuitton fragrance. So I found out about it while I was in LA for a while. I was just in LA working, having some fun, and then I got a call. I knew I had an option for a Louis Vuitton job, but they didn't tell me what it was. I just thought it was like a, a smaller thing for like the, the in-house magazine or something. That's what they told me. So I didn't really think much of it. I was just like waiting to hear if I had to fly back to Europe or not, because I was in LA. So I got a call from my agent and it wasn't just my booker, the guy that looks after me, it was like everyone in the agency was on the phone. And that doesn't usually happen. I was like, hi guys, what's going on? So my booker was like, are you sitting down? I was like, I'll sit down if I need to, why? And then he said, you know that Louis Vuitton magazine option that you had on? I was like, yeah. He said, it wasn't a magazine option. It was for the Louis Vuitton, the first ever Louis Vuitton men's fragrance. And you confirmed for it. I think I just said, what the fuck? So yeah, that's probably the best surprise I've had in my life. I think they didn't tell me when I was on option for it because it's like a confidentiality contract and if they did tell me, I probably would have been freaking out and like, I'd be really disappointed if I didn't get confirmed for it. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, that's about it. It's been a wild ride to this moment, but we're here and we're living in it and there's lots of exciting stuff happening, which I'll tell you about in another video when it happens but it's happening. I was quite apprehensive to make this video because I know it sounds like I'm just bragging about the accomplishments I've had in work, but I've been asked about it a lot and I thought it might be an interesting video for some people. Thank you for listening to me ramble on. I didn't have a plan. Usually I like kind of plan out what I want to say, but I just kind of let the, let the mouth do the, the talk. What? You see, this is why I need a plan. <laughs> If you like these videos where I just sit down and kind of tell a story that I find amusing, hit the like button, I might make more of them. Because I've got a lot of crazy stories that I probably need to get off my mind at some point. Share this video with your friends, have a lovely day, and I will see you next time.